Kyle, what is it with you Americans making every single black person in your TV shows into a racial stereotype? <coughs> well, you see, if we, uh, you know, no, you know, I'm not going to fall for this one. It wasn't me that made it. It's not American. It could have been written by a French person. You don't know. Do we know who the writers are? Hmm? Before I even... Uh, this, uh... Oh, right. No. No, you're gonna say it. You're gonna say, with what, what, okay, why is it, Arch? Hmm? You tell me. You tell me. What makes you say that? The first attack caught him by surprise. My mission ahead it is did. done. I wasn't ready to be attacked. <laughs> so... The Last of Us TV show, right? We watched the first two episodes now. We should have watched it last week, but Kyle happened. Dev! Dev's fault. Dev should have told me sooner. <laughs> so we watched uh, the first um, first one and a half an hour episode and the next 50 minutes episode today. And what's weird is it's not actually a complete train wreck it's no obi-wan kenobi it's no rings of power it's no halo and honestly the most interesting part about the show is the fact that it demonstrates that you can actually do a tv show that is in many ways a shot by shot retelling of the game and have it be good because this is the excuse that the hollywood filmmakers have been using for years now we couldn't just convert it straight over it'd be awful except Every single movie or TV show where they've pretty much just done that, it's been a huge success. Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings took all on the majority of the scenes, only leaving out some of the characters like uh, that one end person, for example, you know? And adding Tom in, yep. Yeah, and Tom Bombadil, they, they added him out too. And then added in like Arwen. But by and large, they're fairly faithful to the books. Then you've got Halo, which is the exact opposite. Like, it would be boring to just watch uh, Master Chief kill aliens, right? Uh, what about if he had a romance with an alien, too? Like, no. And they've changed the lore of everything. Like, it barely has anything to do with Halo, and they just wear it like a, like a skin suit. Yeah, in, this, in this episode today, like, it was actually... You had We had scenes where we were just side by side with the video game, and it was like, it was identical. Yeah, and in Halo, the only good good episodes were the ones that just had gi giant fights. That was it. Because and even it was then, Halo. those were those were barely passable. Like they were kind of like, hey, you know, you could you could watch a better action flick. Like yeah. I'd rather watch Starship Troopers for the action than uh, Halo for its action scenes. For better or worse, last The Last of Us is actually a decent TV show because it follows the game so closely. The only like really major change that might even hint at a bit of wokeism so far is the race swap of Joel's daughter which <laughs> this is this is <laughs> oh, he can't even contain himself like, already okay Slow down. <laughs> so they make Joel's daughter black from being a blonde white kid right and they yep. in the fridge there's a there's a giant watermelon that's been in there for so long it's got freezer burns then his daughter goes up to Joel's room, steals 20 bucks from him. Yeah, that was <laughs> weird. It's like, okay, so she's black. She's stealing from her dad. There's watermelon in the fridge. <laughs> They've also implied that, you know, because in the story of the video game, just like in the, the show, Joel's wife left him. So, you know, the black parent left yep, as well. The it's black like, parent ooh, left. Like, like, this is a really weird thing you're doing, show, but you know what? <sighs> that aside, it wasn't terrible. It's just, it's again, why why do it is it was, the, the question I think we need to ask. It was just such a weird series of events. Like, why did she do this? This was just odd, but okay. Like, a, yeah. And it, it wasn't even a big deal because she dies in the first episode. Honestly, yep. if you're being spoiled after the game's been out for a decade, screw you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been out Hostile. for 10 years. I'd also like to point out that while this this seemed, this seemed actually got the most drama, but this actually has the least impact on the actual overall story. The biggest impact so far that I've seen, differential-wise, is the spore retcon, where the spores are no longer airborne and in the dark. They're still affected by UV, but they did a weird thing where it's kind of like avatar like arch mentioned earlier where the, the they turn the spore zombies into a hive mind and if you step on something it makes them all react that was a that is the weirdest change i think of the whole thing and that's like the big one in my opinion 
I I think it was they did it to avoid any references to masks whatsoever. Because the thing is, the show is has actually been studiously trying to avoid any and all attempt uh, or any attempt of offense against the audience. It has avoided it at every step. It doesn't take the piss of it or out of the audience. It doesn't try to make a political commentary. It doesn't try to make a current year point or anything like that. So I think they figured like, okay, masks right now, bit, bit sus. There's a lot of people who have really strong emotions around that fucking shit right now. So let's just avoid them entirely. And I don't know if that's the explanation, because the other explanation might also be that, um, Pedro? Question mark. <laughs> Pedro Pascal? I keep wanting to call him Pablo, because Pablo Schreiber. Oh, uh, you got it right. It's Pedro, it's Pedro yes. Pascal. Because one of those, uh, that Pedro might have insisted that his face be on screen, because there are rumors going around that during the Mandalorian, he basically kicked up a bitch fit that he had to take off his helmet, because nobody knew it was him. Maybe? I mean, an actor with an ego would hardly be the most unusual thing in the world, you know? Yeah. But in the two first episodes, the only part in which they would have had the need to put on a mask is one portion in episode two that lasts for, like, 15 minutes? 15, 10 minutes. It's a very short sequence where they're in the museum and they encounter some clickers and they have to deal with them and dispatch them. Yes. Uh, for anyone who is somehow unaware, by the way, this is a zombie apocalypse, but the zombies are funguses. And the funguses used to be spread via airborne spores, which has now been retconned, so that they don't have to wear gas masks anymore. Yep, because here's the reproduction cycle of the zombies in this, in this universe. Person gets infected, they eventually, the fungal start, stuff starts to protrude, they lose their eyesight, and then they click with the chattering of their teeth. But because they're sensitive to UV rays, they hide in buildings. So once they reach that stage, they can no longer be outside. Um, and then eventually, their final stage is they basically, the body dies, and they turn into a big giant fungal spore that emits, or a fungal like body that emits tons of spores into the air. And then the cycle repeats, new person accidentally stumbles into it, becomes infected, cycle repeats. Yes. And they moved away from this here over to some kind of tentacle monster thing that lives in their throats and infects people directly. And yep, like little tendrils come out of their mouth, yeah. That was a weird and frankly stupid change like there, there's there is not a good point for why this is beyond avoiding any mentions of masks or allowing pedro to show his face constantly because it also it's it's one of the weakest points of the show is that in the first episode they spend a lot of time on kind of a prequel kind of thing like 10 15 minutes on setting things up when you already know what's going to happen and then I think what they're trying two, to do there is show us more of the backstory than the video game did, but it didn't yeah. it didn't really add anything except no. for the daughter stealing from her dad instead of saving for her dad to buy her him a gift. Yes. Which is a weird It's a weird change. Because in the game, that was her that she'd saved up money to uh, fix his watch. Yep, as a gift. Yes. And in the second episode, there's ten minutes where we go to Jakarta, Indonesia, just, <laughs> just, just because, uh, where we're introduced to what is probably like ground zero of the infection, where they bring in a, um, a, a fungus expert to be like, hey, look at this cool zombie we've got stowed away here. And she's like, well, we are all dead. Bomb the city. Bomb the city now. Like, okie dokie. Yep. And that was that was I think that whole sequence there because the, in the, the beginning of the, the first episode they have a large exposition dump about the, the how the zombie virus works or how the zombie fungal uh, fungi works and instead of showing you like they do in the video game they do this massive expedition and exposition dump in the beginning which is just again unnecessary and it does it doesn't really add anything except it just tells us rather than show us like the video game did that was a missed opportunity. And in episode two, like with the Jakarta incident, all that simply does is it tries to justify the retcon by showing the little tendrils in the mouth. Which again, just, it doesn't really add anything. It's like, 
the whole retcon really doesn't do anything. And the showrunners said on Twitter, if I remember right, like, oh, we're doing this going to be, it's going to be slightly different than how, this, how it works, but it'll be really worth it. Like, the payoff is going to be great. And right now, like, the payoff was a scene where the one zombie walks up to this girl, uh, uh, Tess, and basically its tendrils goes into her mouth. And it was kind of gross and creepy as it was, like, kissing her and infecting her that way. And I was like, that's just, like, that's the payoff? That's weird. That's not a payoff. That's just, like, somebody's fetish. <laughs> it's not a particularly good change. But the rest of the show is actually quite good. Pedro Pascal is an excellent actor. He does very well here. I have no complaints very about true. him. Uh, Gabriel Luna is shown for a little bit. Um, he also does well though, when we see him. The supporting cast has been okay. I haven't seen anything particularly noteworthy poor. Uh, though we have to move on to Ellie. Uh, Ellie Williams, played by Bella Ramsey, who just doesn't fit. Like, visually, like, behavior-wise, she's not endearing. She gets better in episode two, but there is far too much strong female character in her. Yep. It, she doesn't have the same feeling that Ellie had in the game. Because Ellie in the game was a strong female character, and she was very tough due to the, due to what she had to endure. But the way it comes off is very different in the video game. Because when you play the video game, the Last of Us video game, you, you still get the feeling that she's a young girl. Like, yes, she's tough because of her the circumstances. But she's still naive, and she still does, you know... She isn't necessarily bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, but she's definitely a child that still has a lot of growing to do. Yes, whereas this uh, this chick comes across exactly as what she is, a, a just about 20-year-old, fully grown adult woman, and it just... It doesn't come... Yeah, it's not right. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like Ellie. No, it's, it, it's a bit disappointing in that regard, but... I don't know, for me, for me watching this, not knowing anything about the despicable console game, etc., I'm not really that pulled in. Like, I watch this, and I'm like, okay, it's a TV show. It's not doing anything actively to piss me off. It's just, to me, this is, feels like a very bog-standard zombie story. Like, yeah. I don't necessarily get the hype, but hearing, like, uh, Dev, as we were watching along, and Kip's going, like, this is from the, the, the video game. That's actually rather heartening, because, God, I wish other adaptations of video games would have that. It's like, oh, wow, I can recognize it. Yeah, there does seem to be a lot of passion in the show, especially when it comes to a certain, a lot of scenes uh, where they're moving around, like one of the scenes where they're outside and they're leaving the uh, Boston QZ, or in other zones where they were talking to other characters. Like, they recreate a lot of the areas from the video game almost identical um, and a lot of establishing shots and how the characters are progressing throughout the story is like, it feels like you're in the video game, like the scene when they're uh, in the vehicle with uh, his daughter, I can't remember the name of, and uh, his brother, and they're fleeing at night. Like that is almost completely identical to the video game where they're driving through all the things that are bad that were happening. It was very well done, like very well done in the sense that it was so close to the actual game Unlike the Halo TV show, which was nothing like the actual source material at all. It's a yes. stark contrast. They have, unironically, actually done a pretty damn good job here, it seems. Which is very unusual. Two episodes so far, so good, seems to be matching the video game. And Except I... for those some a little annoying things. I don't see how they can straight up ruin this right now. Because right now, my, my biggest complaint is like they're spending a bit too much time on the 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 prequel nonsense and Ellie could be better, but it all seems solid. Like, I don't see what they're going to do at this point to make it just really retarded. Huh? Yeah, I guess we'll find out. I mean... Right now, the story's in full swing. Like, at the end of episode two, it's basically right at the part where Tess dies. They change how Tess dies quite a bit uh, due to a zombie horde, uh, rather than, and she self-sacrificed, rather than Fedra agents, or Fedra troops. So that was a bit different. Um, so far, they haven't tried to make the Fireflies into quote-unquote good guys. Again, don't worry about spoilers. The Fireflies, uh, they aren't good people. Uh, Fedra is just doing what they they have to to survive, and they do harsh measures because it's a military 
uh, Junta, basically. And so these two factions are competing. And so far, they haven't done anything there to make it weird. Because I remember when we were watching, like, are they going to try to turn the, the the Fireflies into, like, the, the communist revolutionaries trying to save the day? And no, the Fireflies are just, you know, they're rebelling against the Junta. They're attempting to... I think they said their goals were to restore some order of, like, democracy, which I assume, like, I don't know what they meant by that. <laughs> like, what? Are we going to make it into a representative republic again, or what? But yeah, so far, not terrible. The The nice thing is, I actually quite like the fact that they are working a lot harder to humanize the characters. Like, you know, uh, Joel and woman thing... They don't murder yes, their way through dozens of those Fetter agents before getting there. In fact, Joel only kills one person, and he does so in a blind rage from a post-traumatic stress flashback to when his daughter is killed. It makes him far more sympathetic, and moving the, the villain role over onto the zombies actually makes them far more human. You know? They're, they're just... Dudes trying to survive the apocalypse, and they got this little girl who's like, I'm immune to fungal spores. Okay. Yep. As you'd expect, just based on what Arch said there, um, all because of all in the video game, there's a lot more combat sequences you have to go through. And that's because, again, it's a video game, it's interactive media. You got to have some combat, you got to have some of that. And the combat was fun enough, even though it was fairly basic. But um, in the show, they haven't actually had that much combat. There was. The encounter with the Fedra agent, who is by himself for whatever reason, uh, and then he dies. And then there was the two clickers that they mm -hmm. had to fight. And that was it. Granted, if I remember in the video game, there was like at least five or five or four combat encounters in total during that whole sequence where you'd have to fight stuff. So again, they, they're making the transition. The changes that are there are to focus more on this narrative and story aspect, which makes sense because it is a, uh, well, a TV show instead of an interactive video game, so you don't need to have video game sequences. Yep, I quite appreciate it. It's a far more heavy focus on the story. There's also the uh, the addition of the mycelial internet, which is um, what they did instead of the masks, essentially. So instead of the masks, where they have to wear masks in certain areas so it's not like, affected by the spores, instead, every, um, every, 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 every uh, spore cluster, hub, etc., is a sort of landmine, where if you tread on it, then all of the other zombies go like, oh, over there, and they begin charging at you. That is an element to add in that threat when they're in the areas, because the zombies have, um... <laughs> so, uh, we're talking about this. They're, they're in with the clickers. I'm like, why don't they just shoot them? I'm kind of like, you can't have a gunfight in a zombie city. Then they have an enormous gunfight, and all of the other zombies are like, must have been the wind. Yeah, the other zombies don't really care, which is kind of weird because the zombies are... Like, when they when they do clear zombies, they shoot them in an area, and then they move on. And there's normally, like, a lot of them in an area. Like, you know, 8 or 10 or 12 or even some more than that. And you gotta clear them all out. And this, there was, like, two two clickers in one of the buildings. It's like they're shooting them, and there's, like, loud gunfight noises. And it's like, okay, you know, you'd expect some of the nearby clickers from the, the nearby area to react and be on their way. And no... They, there weren't any. I mean, it's entirely possible there weren't any that were in the area, but it, it, it leads me to suspect that they've taken the focus away from guns being loud and bangy and noisy to drawing attention from blocks and blocks away to being like, no, it's just uh, only a couple in the area and stepping on the mycelial uh, network that triggers it, which is weird still. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't like that very much. Just Again. Weird. The odd little change to the spores is dippy, but it's not the worst thing in the universe, you know? It's... It's it's nitpicky at this point. It's fine. It's a TV yeah. show. It's watchable. It's not Obi-Wan Kenobi. The world is happy, relatively speaking. It should definitely be head-padded, because this is the correct direction to go in. Like, if we're going to make adaptations, this is what Halo should have been. Where there were some changes, but they were all for, you know, the best intentions, you know, for narrative reasons. Rather than race swapping 
all of the keys for no reason, and then on top of that, changing Miranda keys completely and making Captain Keys into a tard. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just not worthwhile. You know, I'll be the controversial one and say that I'm not entirely sure the show deserves the ridiculously high rating it's gotten, but... Oh, yeah, true. Isn't it's it like not bad. 9 out of 10 or something? Yeah, 9.9 more. Yeah, okay, like, I get it, right? It's a somewhat passable TV show world, but, like, it doesn't make it a 9.9. point fucking nine. Hey, I, I think it's better than House of, Dra- House of the Dragon. <laughs> there you go. That is true. Like, it is way better than House of the Dragon. It's better than all the shows we've watched thus far, I'd say. Yeah, no, it is actually legitimately pretty damn good, which is a nice surprise. That is. And that is all we have to discuss today. Beyond the watermelon with the goddamn freezer burns on it, man. Just happens to be a watermelon. Don't know why it's there, but we just put it there. That's like, it. it's like that ridiculous scene from Cowboy Bebop, where... Oh god, the old woman is like he, No, the, the black guy's like Are you blackmailing me? Are you a blackmail on me? I'm like, oh my Jesus Cowboy Bebop, stop Yeah Yeah, that's just sad Maybe, who knows, maybe the age of adaptations Being good is On the horizon, dare we hope Well, Although. That's the neat thing, because the most valuable part of Last of Us so far is demonstrating that a faithful adaptation can be made and will, in fact, meet with tremendous fan applause. Who knows? Maybe the lesson has finally sunk in that if you want people to watch your TV show, just make it good. And make it about the actual thing. Respect the fandom. Don't piss on them. God, help me. shouldn't be that hard, but it is. It shouldn't be. And maybe it isn't so hard any longer. We can all but hope. But yeah. We can only hope. That's about it. Until next time, I've been Arch. This has been my pet. Hey, Gibbs. Not pet. Not to self. Edit that out. <laughs> no, don't. I'll edit that out. Bastard. Until next time, have a good day.